In this video, we are going to see a very simple thought experiment that can be used in order to invalidate the commonly spread anti-relativist claim according to which time dilation supposedly applies to light clocks only and not to material objects. Before we jump into the subject, let us see why anti-relativists often make such a claim. Time dilation is a cornerstone of relativity. It is a trivial consequence of Einstein's two postulates of relativity, which have never been faulted by any experiment in the last 120 years. The derivation of the time dilation formula is so simple, as it involves no more than 8th grade math, that some anti-relativists crumble under the overwhelming evidence and reluctantly concede that time dilation is a real thing. However, they refuse to give up on their wish for relativity to be wrong, so they claim, without any substantial proof, that time dilation applies only to light clocks and not to material objects, and that, as a result, relativity is supposedly flawed. Before we prove them wrong, let us quickly derive again the time dilation formula. Here, we will in particular make use of Einstein's second postulate, which states that the speed of light in vacuum is the same for all inertial observers. Although non-intuitive, this postulate has never been faulted by any experiment. In other words, we have never seen light going slower or faster than the speed of light in vacuum. Thus, this is a well-established fact. So, we consider here an imaginary light clock that is at rest in some inertial frame and which consists of a light pulse traveling at the speed of light c, bouncing back and forth between two mirrors separated by a distance h. During one cycle, the pulse travels two times the distance h and this takes a time t. Thus, by definition of the speed, we have h equals ct over 2. Now, suppose that an observer is another inertial frame in which the light clock is traveling to the right at speed v. Then, the observer sees the light pulse traveling along a diagonal path of length l from the bottom to the top mirror, which is longer than the distance h between the mirrors. Since the speed of the pulse is the same as in the previous inertial frame, it doesn't take a genius to understand that the observer will measure a longer time t prime for the pulse to achieve a round trip. So, time dilation is already proven. But we can do better and determine exactly by how much the time t prime is longer than the time t. For this, we apply again the definition of speed to find that L is equal to C T prime over 2. But we can also make use of the Pythagorean theorem and say that L square must be equal to the square of the base of the right triangle, V T prime over 2, plus the square of its height, H. Next, we substitute C T over 2 for the value of H and C T prime over 2 for the value of L. We obtain an equation that depends only on the times t and t prime and the speed of light c. Finally, by solving for t prime, we obtain the famous time dilation formula. As you see, the derivation is ridiculously simple, so if you want to prove that the time dilation formula is wrong, you basically have to prove that the Pythagorean theorem is wrong. Good luck with that. Nevertheless, some anti-relativists claim that the time dilation formula does not apply to material objects. In particular, it supposedly does not apply to a mechanical clock. So, let us prove them wrong. We are going to consider here another imaginary device, a syncodi clock. It involves both a light clock and a mechanical stopwatch, and the fate of Einstein's cat will be determined on whether the light clock and the stopwatch are synchronized or not. The stopwatch has a contact so that when it is started, it activates a laser that sends a pulse toward the mirror. Right after the pulse has been emitted, an actuator shifts a light detector to the position where the laser was. When the pulse comes back to the detector after having been reflected by the mirror, a signal is sent to one input of an XOR gate. 
The stopwatch also has another contact so that it sends a signal to the other input of the gate when it reads a time of 30 seconds. Here is the truth table of the XOR gate. We can see that the output is in a high state only if one and only one of its input is in a high state. If instead both inputs are low or both are high, then the output is low. Now, if the output is high, then it triggers a hammer that breaks a vial of poison, which results in the death of Einstein's cat. In other words, if the pulse takes more than 30 seconds to come back to the detector, then Einstein's cat dies. Same if the pulse takes less than 30 seconds to come back to the detector. The only way that the cat can survive is if the light clock and the stopwatch are perfectly synchronized. So, let us choose for the distance h the particular value of 4,496,886,870 meters. And let us remind that the exact speed of light is 299,792,400 458 meters per second. We are going to make two thought experiments. In the first experiment, Einstein and the Syncodai clock are at rest in an inertial frame. As he starts the stopwatch, Einstein observes the pulse moving at the speed of light towards the mirror. The time needed for it to reach the mirror is by definition equal to the distance divided by the speed. Thus, we find the time t equals 15 seconds. It takes the same amount of time for the pulse to come back to the detector, thus it happens when the stopwatch indicates 30 seconds. Since the stopwatch sends its signal to the XOR gate at the same time as the detector, the output remains in a low state and no poison is released. As a result, Einstein observes that his cat survives the experiment. The second experiment is the same as the first one, but this time it is Schrödinger who makes the observation from an inertial frame in which both Einstein and the Syncodai clock are moving at speed v, which we choose to be equal to square root of 7 quarters of the speed of light. Schrödinger knows how simple the derivation of the time dilation formula is, so he agrees with it and finds out that it takes a time of 20 seconds for the pulse to reach the mirror. However, he makes the hypothesis that time dilation does not apply to the stopwatch. Thus, according to this hypothesis, the stopwatch should read the same time as Schrödinger's own watch when the pulse reaches the mirror namely 20 seconds. By symmetry, the stopwatch should display a value of 40 seconds when the pulse comes back to the detector. Let us see if this makes sense. So, Schrodinger sees Einstein starting the stopwatch and the laser emitting the light pulse. The light pulse reaches the mirror after 20 seconds and at that moment the stopwatch supposedly indicates that same time. No problem so far. Then the stopwatch is clearly going to indicate 30 seconds before the pulse comes back to the detector. So the release of poison has been triggered. As a result, Schrodinger would conclude that the cat does not survive the experiment. Fortunately, Schrödinger is a reasonable good physicist and he knows that the fate of Einstein's cat cannot depend on the choice of reference frame. He then concludes that his hypothesis is incorrect and must be rejected. Ultimately, he concludes that time dilation applies universally to all objects, just as it does to light clocks. And once again, anti-relativists have been proven wrong.